Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Batman. The Batman. The Batman. We just watched it a couple of days ago and we- Two days ago. Two days ago, yep. And we haven't spoken to each other about it since. Jake is a big, huge Batman fan, but I- Not huge, but I, I, like, Bat I like the movies. She has not seen them. Look, I think we should watch it. Let me know if you think we should watch like the Nolan <gasps> movies because she, okay, here's the thing. Every time I tried to get her to watch The Dark Knight because I thought, wait, you haven't seen The Dark Knight? You've got to see it, it's a really good movie. Totally refused because she says she doesn't like how Batman is so dark and there's never any jokes and it's just depressing. But what's funny is, and this is getting us back on track to The Batman, is that the Batman is way less funny and way more somber and serious than the Dark Knight movies. Yeah. Way more. I and mean. and it's way more one note. When you actually think about like the Nolan movies, there's way more levity. There's a lot of variety in terms of like the, the stuff that's going on. You know? I'm going to have to watch it now that you've like <laughs> shamed me publicly. So I mean, like I don't have any choice. I guess we're watching it and we'll do a review about but it. I do think that it's good that you haven't seen them in this case because it gives you a unique look at the Batman because it's probably going to seem a little more fresh to you. And, and we have not spoken a word about it since we watched it we literally have been keeping our thoughts to ourselves so i'm excited right now i get to ask you someone who's never seen the dark knight movies who is very unfamiliar with batman what did you think of the batman first of all i saw a lot of cartoons and i also saw justice league so that's not fair the cartoon version not the you know <sighs> i don't know i like at first i'm gonna be honest beyond well what did you okay what did you like about it what did you like about the batman well, let's go about what I didn't like first. Oh, okay. Let's start with what you didn't like. Okay. And then I'll end on a positive note. <laughs> okay. So I really, like it was three hours long. Yeah. At the first hour, I was kind of dreading the next two hours because Batman is a very one-noted movie for me. And I understand any superhero movie is like, this, you know, you know the ending, you know the villain, you know, like there's really not many surprises. But I guess for me, coming from a Marvel fan, because I'm a big time Marvel movie watcher, I just felt like there wasn't any like hints of surprises or twists yeah. that like Marvel movie has. I feel DC exactly the same way. Oh, okay. The DC movie really lacks for me. So but I, I think what it, it, you could even compare it to The Dark Knight though, because The Dark Knight has twists and turns and really great screenplay and story elements. Whereas this, it, like you said, I thought it was very one note. Yeah. They could have done a lot with his personal life um to make it a little bit more different like i understand like we all know that batman's parents die uh, i felt like it would have been interesting to actually like see more s what makes batman batman psychologically well i actually liked that it was more about batman over bruce wayne because we haven't really seen that before in movies i think i mean i guess because i haven't seen batman movies yeah. i can't judge that <laughs> so yeah i also didn't like the love story that he had with catwoman because i felt like it was, it was very brief very it was very brief it was kind of like ooh, something's gonna happen and you would hint at something you wanted them to have sex you yeah. were just dying. you just really wanted them to have sex and you didn't get to see that you said it, not me. <laughs> but but I also thought it was kind of creepy that he kind of watched her undress. Yeah. There are some weird aspects to it. And it was very predictable for me. Like very I told you, I told you the story before like it unfolded. So it was it was very predictable. And honestly, it felt like it was doing the Dark Knight story idea like wise in terms of the villain, because the Riddler, I think I don't think they were able to differentiate the Riddler far enough from um, the Joker in The Dark Knight, and it actually felt like a watered-down version of that story. So, can I say what I, I, my take on it? Yeah. Well, you're, what you didn't like, because we haven't gotten to what I liked yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, I think it's funny how people were saying that it's the most realistic Batman, when to me, like, no, it's definitely not. To me, it's... The most stylized Batman since um, uh, Joel Schumacher in terms of just like the aestheticizing of every shot, every like surface is, I mean, it's gorgeous, but everything, it's so stylized that the dialogue, it's very mannered, it's very slow. Like even in scenes where they were just talking regularly, they were like whispering, like Gordon and Bruce. I'm like, why are they whispering? They could just be like ha talking with a normal vo tone. Like, mm -hmm. it, so there were things like that. Those things were interesting, but to me, it was punishingly long. And one note, like there was not any variety. I thought it was 
like the first hour, I was like, this is really cool. I'm really into this, this tone, the mood. I think a lot of people say that about like the first half, but then you start to go, okay, where are, we? what are we developing? How are things gonna change? Is there going to be a, a twist? Is, uh, are the stakes gonna be raised? To me, it just felt like the stakes, and I'm talking like screenplay-wise, the stakes were just the same every moment. It was, the, the Riddler did something, we gotta figure it out. Now we figure that out, the Rid, Rid, Riddler did another thing, now we gotta figure that out. It was just, and then, and then, and then, um, not exploring and advancing the stakes and, and, and complicating them, which, if you want to compare it, obviously, to a, a really good screenplay like The Dark Knight, the stakes are getting are rising in really significant ways and, and getting more complicated. And to me, this felt like, all right, this happens and this happens, and it just so happens that we end up here. It felt kind of random and like we aren't really moving somewhere until it felt like, oh, well, we have to now raise the stakes suddenly. So for no apparent reason, the Riddler just... Okay, I'm not going to spoil it, but because we're not doing spoilers yet, we're going to mm-hmm. do spoilers later, but... To me, it was totally, totally flawed screenplay. I felt like if they had a better screenplay and they tightened it, even if they had just tightened the movie, they didn't. They, they don't didn't even need like a spectacular screenplay. I think because the movie has so many great elements. But if they had just tightened the movie down to even like two and a half hours or less, mm-hmm. I think it would have been much stronger. Again, just the pacing from moment to moment, scene to scene, it was all the same type of pace. The standout moments in the movie to me were like the car chase scene, the action, the action is fantastic. And I loved this magnificent uh, like beauty that they're able to capture, yet so much of the movie is focused on trying to be this serious like uh, seven like David Fincher drama and it felt very pretentious because it felt like it was trying to be something that it's not. It was like, look at how serious we are. Like, yeah, we have these really great action stuff, but we're going to focus on talking slow and and pretending like this is a really complex cop procedural when it was it was very simple. It was a very simple story. Simple problems had to be solved. You know, it just wasn't, the complexity wasn't there for the, the style they were going for. Well, like, yes, I did like the car chase scene. I also liked, I never really liked any Bruce Wayne scenes, to be honest, because they were very brief and very blah mm-hmm. to me. I'll have to wait to talk about this in the spoiler section but the hospital scene you know i felt like he could have done a lot with it but i felt like it was very limited it was very Um, basic very simple yeah what i loved about it is the car chase was amazing um i felt like what happened after the car chase was a little bit of like a disappointment i mean overall it wasn't a bad movie no it's not a bad movie i recommend it was just very disappointing because i was the way people were talking about it i was like wow this could be really something i love what they did the visual style i love the music so much so, so much. But um, after a certain amount of time, it just became punishingly long. From all the reviews I've seen, even people who like it, they almost always say, yeah, it feels like it's three hours. And that's not a good sign. If a movie is, feels like it's three hours and it's three hours, like that's... Yeah. It felt like it was four hours to me. Yeah, for me, it was just like a lot of waiting for the ending. Well, we, I'm like really surprised to hear that he actually had problems with the movie because you acted like you really loved it the whole way around. That well, I, I wanted really... to love it I, I, because I was trying to give it a chance, you know, and I think you made up your mind sooner than I did, but I was trying to give it, I was like, okay, let's see where it goes story-wise, but I was really loving it. Loved the mood. I love I love this main theme and the way the design design is for Gotham, the, the the visual elements were just wonderful, but nothing changed the whole way through with that element. Well, the funny thing is, you like the beginning, I didn't like the beginning, I like the end. To me, that it becomes a typical superhero movie in the last hour. Well, yes, but it, it kind of was like, maybe it was like all... <laughs> it became very stereotypical, and I felt like it became very... Uh, it kind of revealed itself as like, oh, like... All the pretensions of the first half were like kind of ruined. Just like, oh, this is like, why are they pr- trying to pretend like this is a smart drama? Like this is very cheesy. I didn't think you know. that it was cheesy though. I felt like the ending, a lot of it paid off. A lot of it didn't. But after sitting through two hours of the movie, I was like, maybe so I'm that just something was going to happen. Yeah. Like, I, and then it was also fun to like play the guessing game of like what will did. happen and see if I was right or not. So I think maybe that's what made it fun. But so would you recommend it? Or 
overall? If, yeah, like I, I would say like it's definitely worth a shot. Like it's definitely not a waste of time. If you don't really care about Batman at all, I don't think this is a great entry for someone to watch Batman, sorry. You know, I, I think this is not the movie you should watch if you've never seen a Batman movie. You should be sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I should have shown you The Dark Knight before we watch this, but I think it's kind of funny now that you'll get to see The Dark Knight after this. Although, I really love the interpretation of, of uh, Batman. I liked Robert Pattinson's performance. I loved the interpretation he took on it. I just wish that he had some better script material to work with. Yeah, wanna get to the spoiler section? You ready? Yeah. All right. We start the movie, and I want to talk a little bit about the Batman's character. We start the movie where he says, I am vengeance. This is his way of trying to fix the city and kind of live up to his father's legacy. There's some stuff going on with his, his father, and I thought it was kind of rushed. A lot of, okay. A lot of the exposition scenes were very rushed, I felt like, and mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of the exposition exposition was, it was just not done very well. It was a lot of explaining, and at a certain point in the movie, I was like, wait, are we just going to be saying all of this stuff mm -hmm. without any, like, showing any anything? Like, you don't have to do flashbacks or anything, but it's like, so a lot of the exposition was just on the TV. Like, they just looked at the TV, and they're just talking about what we need to know, and it's like, I wish there was another, I wish we could have gotten it a little more of a, a, in an interesting way. I didn't feel that way. I felt like there was too much talking, and I would be fine with that if the talking was interesting, and if each scene was interesting, and, and um, had interesting stakes, but it just, it, it, it didn't for a lot of the movie. Batman's character, I keep saying Batman and not Bruce Wayne because I felt like Bruce Wayne was really not present. And I think that was an interesting choice because he is so like depressed and angsty. He's just like this emo teen. And, mm -hmm. it, and I thought that was like a fun take. And I, I, I could believe it with, with Pattinson. I don't know if I could believe that with a, another actor, but he really sold it. By the end of the movie, I thought it was a nice little arc where he like, oh, this isn't, the what I'm doing, it really isn't the way to be helping people. You know, I'm not vengeance, I'm hope. And I remember you even said that. It was predictable. Bowl, but it was it was something it was a character moment that we got that I liked instead of just walking around <laughs> Sedona is vengeance you see that she is yeah my thing was that it wasn't anything special it didn't like it didn't open with like a big gesture in some sense that I'm used to from Marvel Granted, we're talking about different movies, and some of you guys may be mad at me for coming. I like that it was different. I that's what I like. That's what I appreciate about it is that yeah, it was something different. They were trying to do something different, even it, if it didn't work perfectly. It was something unique. Yeah, I rather have it be the same than be something <laughs> unique that's not doesn't that's work. Fine. I mean, I'm happy to see something new. Yeah, I think that's why you like the beginning, and I didn't. But you know, I really like knew what he was like when he came through. What you said, he was like, "I'm vengeance," you know. So you know that the arc is going to be about his anger problems and his need for revenge and a turnaround will be that vengeance will be eliminated and instead a hopeful Batman will be born instead. It's and all, yeah. he he realizes that at the end, you know, one of the bad people introduces himself as vengeance, just like Batman does. And also the main villain in the movie says that Batman is the inspiration behind this terrorist attack. It's very obvious and on the nose, but yeah. it's something. You know? It is something, exactly. And I thought it was beautiful when they like the bad guy attacks. They all like bomb the whole place. They flood the whole city and it was beautifully chaotic. Sounds like you were on the Riddler's side there. <laughs> no, like I mean, the scene was very beautifully <laughs> No, it was, it was very well done. And I mean, all the scenes were really well shot. I mean, that's... Yeah, it was well shot. I didn't like Batman, like when he first sees Catwoman, he like sees her change and everything. And he's like, there's not even like a little bit of of any humor or any smirk or anything it's kind of almost like he's a little creep i, I don't know it kind of he is a little me. creep i know but it was like <laughs> it wasn't little... done in like a, it was done in a i felt like i interpreted that as like doing it in a very creepy way versus like oh god should i be looking i mean i understand that that's batman he's probably creeping on a lot of people but it's just uncomfortable for me to watch i also thought that his relationship with catwoman developed a little too too fast like as if he was just turned on by her because she could do some acrobats he didn't really get to know her too much it was just more of an initial like sexual flirting. attraction yeah. 
but she at the end of the movie asks him to go with her so i just felt like that was a really big turnover over a little evidence of any relationship i like the scene where and we laughed at this too where uh batman like goes up to catwoman and he's like look at me because she has the contacts in he's like looks good yeah that's <laughs> that's what i like too just because he's so emotionally cut off from everything and like at the end of the movie there's a hint that maybe his he'll be able to like grow a little bit and that's why i'm looking forward to the sequels because i'm like well i want to see what they do with this character (laughs) dating batman is like dating a wall (laughs) it's fun to watch someone else try to like have a relationship with it because it's so weird but (laughs) it's not going to be fun in real life well so it's kind of cool in a way to see it happen Mm -hmm. and like you can paint the wall in the next movie and give it more character that's what batman is going to be he's getting more character so batman he has a car chase scene with With the penguin with the penguin that i love that scene actually so much because the colin farrell as the penguin was perfect and he brought so much life it was something different everyone else is acting so somber and serious and he was like something different something unique yeah, and then also like how he he th- thinks that he like killed Batman. Yeah, and, and he's laughing. That was the best moment laughs, in the movie. He laughs, and then yeah. Batman just comes, and I just thought that was like, oh my god! It just felt like it was gonna be at its all time high. Like Batman is gonna be even of a bigger badass. He just well, survived. That's what this. I was missing. Yeah. yeah, and then he's gonna come there. No, they don't even do anything with him. Like. It, yeah. it just felt like there was so much opportunity that was missed in that scene at the very end because it like builds it up to this badass scene where Batman is like unkillable basically. And then he is. Yeah, we could talk. About and that then he's not yeah. he can't even do anything. See, that's the thing. Like when that moment came, I was like, yes, we need more of this. But then the movie was like, no, that's all you get. Like, yeah, because the movie was so good at setting up Batman as a badass and we get all this build and no release. That's what it felt like. And especially yeah. the music. It's like, bomb, bomb, bomb. Like, it's exactly. slowly building. The whole move. We're slowly building. No release. Exactly. And, and I felt like that was... He needed end. more badass moments. Yeah. Because the, 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 those moments well, were so good. let's talk about the ending really quick. That's a badass moment. It really wasn't, though. Well, okay. Okay, I felt like it had a capability of being a badass But moment. there was no real badass moment okay. for Batman. The ending of the movie, uh, the Riddler basically is trying to reveal the corruption in Gotham, which is great, except he happens to be killing people, too, which... Oh no, we can't let that happen. By the way, <laughs> if you haven't seen Jake's skit about villains, it's just so funny. It's just a lot of villains pertaining are doing to that. pertaining to this. But basically, like you know, when villains are right, but then they're also like an extra psychopath. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're doing exactly everything that should be doing, but oh no, they kill people, so that's not good. Um. um anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So the Riddler has been caught. He basically did a seven move and uh, gave himself up, but he has a plan. That's basically ridiculous because his whole thing is about revealing corruption, but now he just wants to murder as many people as possible in a mass shooting. And it's very sudden. Like, it's like, this seems like this would be a very difficult thing to um, execute. execute. But, but it's just he kind has of a lot of people. Though. He has a lot of people, but it's just revealed to the, the information is revealed, revealed to us very suddenly. He, he blows up. We didn't even know that. Okay, first off, we didn't even know that Gotham was like locked in on with water and had like flood barriers, mm-hmm. you know, that it was like below sea level. Maybe they could have introduced that earlier we could have had a payoff you know with that otherwise mm-hmm. it was just like oh, okay i didn't know this was even a, a thing you know that was a mm-hmm. threat that's a minor nitpick but eh. gotham starts flooding and people have to go into this big arena where the newly elected elected mayor is getting is doing a victory speech so everyone's swarming in there and then the riddler has all of his little fans and followers basically a twitch streamer and they're all up there you know with guns ready to shoot just a bunch of people and so batman discovers this plan he tries to stop them and he is just yeah. punching a bunch of guys who are shooting him point blank. And it's very... He's kind of overpowered in the movie because he, there's not really any threat to him physically because he's so... Well, like, he okay. gets shot so many times. There's nothing. Nothing can stop him. He gets blown up in the face. Not, not even a, a scratch, you know? Well, that's not true. I like, think There were a couple problem. of times when he passed out and he his identity was almost revealed. Yes. And the last scene was yeah. the same thing. So he he is definitely under threat. He's not unstoppable. But what I thought was interesting was that he it could have turned into a badass moment like that car scene. Um, Catwoman basically saves him. Well, then a villain, one of the villains um, working with the Riddler, punches 
Catwoman, and he sees that, and he injects himself with this... It was like adrenaline. Yeah, exactly. And But that's where I felt like it was so dumb. Like, he could have... Like, I wish there was something more dramatic. I'm not really sure. Instead of him just extending his hand by jumping down. But to be devil's advocate, and although I wasn't a huge fan of it, I think that that was the point of the movie, is that he's he wasn't trying to be a badass in the moment and be vengeance. Like, when he was beating up that guy just after he did the adrenaline, he's just, like, pointless, you know? And in the end, he's like, well, I just need to help people. Like, I need to be a I hero I understand that. I just wish they did it in a way that was more fill- fulfilling for me. It was. You know what I think would have been more, more fulfilling for me personally? Yeah. Is that Batman at the end realizes, like hey, I'm not being helpful. I'm literally inspiring, like, terrorism. Like, yeah, while I can physically help a few people in this flood, what would really help is if I, like, did what my father did and tried to use all our money to change the city and do some good because it's never shown at any point that he's doing anything with his money. Well, that's one of the criticism that the mayor has for him is that Yeah, he it's has even so brought up many... in the text of the film yeah. that he's not doing anything with yeah, his money. Yeah, and exactly. And I wish he, we had seen that a little bit more of him being more of a humanitarian rather than just vengeance because the thing is that if he's truly turning things around and he wants to be hope he can do a lot by just helping out the city who is overrun by gangs imagine this ending and like imagine him realizing this he comes to the same conclusion like okay vengeance isn't the thing it's about hope but i can do much more good with my money and and try to change the city and do do stuff that isn't just like fighting random criminals on the street yeah and what he can do is, you know what? I'm retiring the Batman. He hangs up his his cowl and his cape. We're like, wow, is that really it? Like, is he really yeah, done? And I then have... that would be a great setup for the sequel because it's like, then there's a new threat. It's the Joker or whatever. And he's like, I have to come back. Like, this is, this, well, I have he, to then he, like, then he learns. Like, give us a reason the, why Then maybe, like, in the sequel, he his arc is to try to combine Bruce Wayne with Batman yeah. and not lose Bruce Wayne. Because yeah. in the first movie, Bruce Wayne is invisible, basically. Yeah. So maybe in this, like in the end of the movie, he finds himself as Bruce. Well, it's kind of like a Spider-Man Two thing. Yeah, well, where... because like Bruce Wayne, he's trying to escape from himself because who he is is an orphan, and he is broken, and he's emotionally shut off. So he confides in his quote unquote second personality of the being the Batman. But at the end, really, what hope is is what you said. I really like that idea. And then in the second movie, well, you know what? Yeah, you can be Bruce Wayne and find yourself, but the city needs Batman. And yeah. the journey of trying to merge those two. Yeah. While not losing either. So I mean one. it'd be like Spider Man too. It'd be like I, I think that'd be interesting. I mean I think so. And I do wonder though a criticism of DC, like they don't perform as good as Marvel. They don't know. They don't and have to build universe like like marvel but i don't they try though they actually do they, but they flubbed it they just haven't had a good like uh, justice league is a built universe well the Zack snyder approach just it, it flopped it didn't work you know like they just did yeah. not do well because they didn't build it up successfully whereas marvel they built it up slowly over time and i think dc was just trying to like get right to the avengers instead of building up the characters and have movies that were successful because i i think that people really tired of the I Man of Steel th- serious tone really quickly. Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing is that I think that like the, the DC movies a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times lack dynamic characters. The end of the movie, I thought it was interesting and kind of funny and weird how Riddler meets Joker in the prison and they just laugh for like five minutes straight, you know? And it's weird uh, that yeah, they're that trying was... to make Batman very real while also like... That's the thing. They were trying to do this serious tone but it was also insanely goofy like it was yeah and all the crime bosses like all the and like not a funny way that's the thing no no and like falcone and everything it was very trying to take it in in a way that could be fine if you're into that but i felt like the crime bosses and everything they were so goofy but they were treated so seriously it's like it's fine if you camp it up a little bit like what they did with penguin they Mm -hmm. camped it up a little bit it was a bit goofy and over the top but that worked because in that world it seems like it fits because it's so stylized yeah. But instead, they try to keep like make everything 
serious. Well, and the thing is, Batman is such a serious character. I understand that. He needs some be, levity around but him. Exactly. And I wish he they, he had more characters around him that were, that, inter- yeah. that were interesting. And, and that I, was my yeah. thing about it, is that I wish that... Okay, I understand Batman is being true to his character, who is a serious guy, who is the most boring date you'll ever have. Whatever. But <laughs> maybe like they can build characters around him that kind of like fills in that missing part of dynamicness that batman doesn't have just to give the movie more yeah. more color and i just need some technicolor here you know well i think batman <laughs> he thrives when he has great characters around him you know and that's why the dark knight is so great it's not because of of the batman's character it's because of heath ledger as the joker you know and, and other villains and issues you know um batman is never the most dynamic in his, in his, in his well movie. that's the thing when you said like uh, about batman and who plays batman i mean i haven't seen the movie but like i've heard and the clips that i've seen are all like heath ledger it's all he's heath so, ledger yeah he's so um iconic and legendary his character is really interesting and i even know that without even watching it so it's kind of like something like that is what and the riddler well, could the riddler ha- was boring Riddler was... He was very generic, just, like, serial killer type person. Yeah, and he wasn't really in the movie too much, to be honest. No. And it was more like... It was just... Okay, so we have to talk about this before we go. Okay. The Riddler wants to kill Bruce Wayne, right? Mm-hmm. And the Riddler wants to partner up with Batman, right? And the Riddler thinks that Batman and him are teammates, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets really mad when Batman refuses to work with him. To be so, fair, the Riddler did more to help the city by... By killing people. Well, by by uh, revealing the corruption, then Batman did by by like beating up some criminals on the subway. You know. Well, that's the thing. Batman just buys from his wealth of just gadgets to beat up like local gang members. It's, he's just like he, he has like just... this. He's a sickness, and that's that's the thing. If you like, if you do Batman and you don't address these parts of it, I think if you address that part where there's there's this kind of something is messed up about this character in general. Like, yeah, he's not giving his money away, which they deliberately mention in the movie. If you're focusing on this issue, like. He's just beating up people in the streets and I, it, like not actually helping anybody. Like, yeah. why would our, this character is like? How could we relate or well, like this thing. character at all? And that's the thing that I felt like was missing at the end. The arc of hope is that they even call out like white privilege with a rich person yeah. as, and everything else, and yet like Batman doesn't do anything with it. So it's like he's just saying. He extends his hand and he's saying, I'm, I want to be something else, insinuating about hope. But the thing is, he doesn't really do anything that could truly give hope. That's the part that really lacked for me is that I don't feel like it came around all the way. The only thing that came around all the way is he's not going to say, I'm vengeance. You know what I mean? But, I mean, that's so basic. Yeah, I mean, it was all about the style, which I love the style. Everyone loves the style, uh, but it just, you, you got to have something else. At least I do. I mean, yeah, so. I'm surprised we're actually very in tune on our yeah, me too. Analysis, yeah. I I, I completely am going to call you out when you say that you're not a big fan or you weren't you're not a crazy fan of Batman. I, you I can... definitely were because everything in your childhood was Batman related. No, it was not. Yes, it was. Who was your superhero if it wasn't Batman? Superman. I love Superman. Well, then why did you have Batman photos and stuff? I did not. I loved The Dark Knight when I mean everyone loved The Dark Didn't Knight. Did your dad out. call you Batman? What are you talking about? <laughs> as like as like when in your old like Facebook post, it wasn't he like saying, I love you, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can cut this out. I just no. made that up. <laughs> I just made that up. Well, thank you for watching everyone. We had a fun time discussing this and let us know what you think about the Batman. And I think what we have to do now is watch uh, the Nolan trilogy. Should we watch that first or should we watch 89 Batman? I feel like we should just go straight into Batman Begins. I feel like that'd be the way to go. Let's do the one that will give me the less shame publicly. <laughs> We'll, we'll watch the Dark Knight trilogy. Let's yes. do that. All right. Yeah, but let us know any other stuff oh, we should watch, new releases or stuff like that. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye.